Welcome back. Welcome to The Crowned Life. And I hope you saw my last video about how to stop being lied to. And if you didn't, at the end of the video, I'll have the link so you can watch it. It kind of ties in a bit to what we're going to talk about today, which is, you know, are you being gaslit by politicians, by the media? How, how would you even know if you're being gaslit? Okay, we're going to talk about it. And I kind of touched upon it briefly in that last video um, on how to stop being lied to. Um, but I think this is a really timely issue right now because I do see a lot of gaslighting going on in um, politics and the media. And I, you know, I talk about it in my book. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm the author of Healing from Narcissistic Abuse. So I have talked about this at gla the gaslighting at length in my book, but this is more on an interpersonal, um, you know, relationship note where I've talked about this. And I want to tie it into more of a, um, on the macro level, what's going on, you know, with society right now, because I see that, um, you know, the gaslighting is occurring for a lot of people on a larger scale. Um, and I think that a lot of people just don't even know how to identify gaslighting at all, you know, w whether it's going on in their personal relationships or professional or just society at large. Okay. So what is gaslighting? It is a very highly effective way for narcissists, people who are empathy deficient, to avoid problems that they have absolutely no interest, no real interest in solving. And so um, what would be some examples of gaslighting? Um, let's say you are confronting uh, somebody or you're trying to address an issue with somebody and the response you get is something along the lines of, well, everybody else agrees with me, so I, I don't know what the problem is. See, this is getting you to question your reality. This is the purpose of gaslighting is to manipulate people to think that they're crazy or that um, they're wrong and they start questioning themselves and their own sense of reality by saying, well, everybody else agrees. I mean, you're the only one who sees it this way, so surely you must be wrong. Um, by the way, this is kind of rhetoric here. This is a way of, it's called bandwagon uh, rhetoric for those of you who are are into philosophy and, and whatnot. But um, if you can't recognize this, then you don't even know that um, you're being, you know, like, kind of manipulated, okay? Here's another example of gaslighting. Very, very common, extremely common. Oh, well, they believe such and such, and you know, because they're crazy or, you know, uh, they're a conspiracy theorist, you know, they're wacko, they're, they're an extremist, okay? Anytime you hear this type of name calling going on, um, calling somebody's sanity into question for really, bringing forth some legitimate, you know, questions uh, about the official narrative. Um, it, it is a way, also a way of deflecting the attention off of, you know, not addressing the question. Like somebody might have brought forth some very honest, valid um, insight or information, but rather than address that head on, we deflect it by calling them a name and then what we do is we lead other people to think, oh, wow, yeah, um, let's not even explore that because they're not even sane. And anybody who even entertains what they're saying, you know, they're not sane either. So I don't want to even agree with those people or I'm not going to go listen to their side of the story because I don't want other people to think, you know, that I'm not sane. And so there's we gaslight ourselves, we gaslight other people who are questioning things by calling them names. Um, in the media, and we see this a lot with politics, you know, this has gone on for a long time, it's human behavior, um, but you know, when you see these politicians getting investigated by Congress, and a congressman asks them a very straight to the point question, which they're really good at doing, um, but the person being interviewed answers back with some non-answer, <laughs> it's deflection, you know, it's a way of answering the question without answering the question. I mean, this person said a whole bunch of nothing and it sounded really eloquent, but the final analysis is you didn't answer the question, okay? This is deflection and we see that going on a lot in the media and in politics and yes, it happens in relationships on a more interpersonal level. So um, sometimes we also just get, 
you know, um, stonewalling in silence, this, this outright refusal to address the issues or the questions um, that are coming up. And so this is all gaslighting if you're not familiar with it. And so I think it's important that people become more aware of this so that, you know, when people are gaslighting them, they they don't get sucked into it. They don't get manipulated and controlled by this type of mental maneuvering. And also, you don't gaslight other people, people who disagree, people who are bringing some, you know, challenge to the official narrative. You don't in turn start gaslighting them and parroting what you heard on TV, that they're crazy, they're wacko, they're conspiracy theorists. Oh, well, you must be an extremist because, you know, and you just start doing this. This is how we silence um, people who are truth tellers in this society. This is how they get silenced. By the way, you know, you do a little bit of research. The term conspiracy theorist was um, coined by the CIA, I believe. Yeah, do research it, okay? And it's a way to silence people, silence dissenters, um, and people who are highly insecure and need other people to tell them, you know, what is the right thing to think and say and feel, you know, because they don't have security within themselves they're gonna get sucked into this, this gaslighting and they're gonna gaslight other people. So um, there's a lot of naivete that leads to deception. And I talked about the deception, you know, in that last video. Um, people who have this naive, really childlike, innocent way of thinking that the person they trust, their favorite politician or news reporter would never lie to them. Like I said in the last video, you got to get honest with yourself about human behavior. We're all capable of deception, not towards just others, but within ourselves. We have a lot of times deception happens because people are deceived within themselves. And, you know, when you talk also about, you know, on a broader scale, mass deception of populations, um, people should know that, you know, false flags have been going on for centuries. Um, what would make this century, you know, anything special or new? Some of you are scratching your head like, what's a what's a false flag? Okay. <laughs> so let me say that real quick for those of you who don't know. You know, that is when people in authority, people who have power, stage a crisis to force a desired outcome. It's Hegelian dialectic, you know, problem, solution outcome okay and it's a way that that people and authority get the population to go along with things they wouldn't ordinarily go along with you know like wearing face masks everywhere <laughs> like who would ordinarily go along with that you have to scare the crap out of people to get them to do that right so um, or just to go along with giving up rights that they wouldn't ordinarily give up, like their right to breathe freely, you know, um, that wouldn't happen. But understand, like, this kind of stuff has been going on, staging a crisis to get a desired outcome, to get people to give up their rights and go along with things. Um, this is nothing new, people. This has been going on for centuries. It's age old, yet most people remain naive ab about it. Going against the status quo is crazy, right? According to what we've been told. And, you know, like I said before, because you're dealing with so many people who are insecure and they need the government or somebody who they think is bigger and stronger, and more powerful than them to tell them what to put their security in or what to say or what to feel or how to dress or how to behave they go along with this for fear of, of being labeled crazy too. And, you know, like I said, this is all gaslighting. Can you realize it? Can you recognize it? Have you been gaslit? I'd like to hear in the comments down below, give me some examples of the gaslighting you've heard going on in the media or with politicians. Have you been made to feel crazy for saying things that are factual? or for questioning the official narrative. And realize this, this is kind of like the gaslighting I'm talking about with the name calling and all of that. 
it's trash talking, right? And if people on a very personal level, you know people are able to trash talk you, to effectively ostracize you, then why wouldn't the same thing be possible on a much larger societal scale? When authorities can, you know, trash talk people, call them crazy, the people who think different, you know, then what happens? We effectively shut down free speech. And so, you know, I, I, I want to keep this video um, somewhat as brief as possible and leave you with the question here of, you know, again, have you been gaslit? Have you gaslit others without realizing that you're doing this? Because it's become so common now um, in our society to to have this going on left and right, and this is a tool of narcissists. And if so, comment down below. And um, like I've been saying to people watching my channel, I'm not gonna tell you to stay safe. I'm gonna tell you to stay free. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Be blessed.